Hello, Saints. Peace, grace, and love of Christ Jesus be with all of you. Hope everybody's having a fantastic day today. We saw in our last study in Acts chapter 24 how the Jewish leaders were accusing Paul of apostasy, trying to uh, provoke the Jews to leave their Mosaic religion for something new, which was the belief in Jesus Christ, which was called the way. Also, they called Paul and his believers the Nazarenes for the first time because Jesus was from Nazareth. And also we saw an individual by the name of Felix and his wife Drusilla. And we discovered that Drusilla's father and grandfather and great-grandfather were all enemies of the Jews. Imprisoning Peter and killing James, beheading John the Baptist, and also killing all the male children under the age of two trying to kill Jesus when he was just a toddler. So we see Satan using the specific family trying to prevent the ushering in of their Messiah. And Hitler did the same thing. And it even continues today. And it's going to continue into Daniel 70th week. Also, at the end of our study, we did a quick Q&A, a question and answer type thing. And we talked about the phrase calling on the name of the Lord to be saved or delivered. And we discovered that it was the Greek word sozo found in Joel 2, Peter 2, Romans 10. And we discovered the word saved or delivered to be a physical deliverance at the end, at the second coming in Mount Zion in Jerusalem for the remnant of Israel. And we discovered how the Bible is not arranged chronologically or even alphabetically. But in fact, the Bible is arranged dispensationally, staring us right in the face going from prophecy to ushering in the kingdom for the Jews then it goes into the book of Acts transitioning from the postponement of the kingdom over to Paul's mystery the body of Christ the gospel of grace amen and the rapture or harpazo the catching up of the body of Christ will end the dispensation of grace then the dispensation of the kingdom will commence once again to usher in Israel's promises that God made to them, making them kings and priests on the earth. We also talked about the mark of the beast, how that worship and the mark go hand in hand. They go together. Those who are on the earth during Daniel 70th week will have to worship the beast. And as proof of their allegiance to Satan, they'll be marked in their forehead or in their hand. And the Jews during this time, the elect, the remnant, who don't worship the beast, will be protected supernaturally. They're going to be given food and provisions and the ability to perform miracles like healing the sick to endure till the end of Daniel's 70th week. Lastly, we discussed how it may be possible for so many Gentiles to make it through Daniel's 70th week. Because God is going to focus on Israel once again. They're the main priority, not the Gentiles. Many of them will possibly be children under the age of accountability, unable to worship the beast. So, like I said, that was just my opinion. And I think it makes a lot of sense, especially considering that Jesus said that the kingdom of heaven belongs to children. Matthew 19, verse 13. Then were there brought unto him little children, that he should put his hands on them and pray. And the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Suffer, little children, and forbid them not to come unto me. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. So that brings us to, the, to today's study, Acts chapter 25. We're getting closer to the final chapter, Acts 28. And we're going to be introduced in this chapter to a new governor, Porcius Festus, who takes the place of Felix. And Festus will introduce Paul to King Agrippa. This is Herod Agrippa II, Drusilla's brother. And if you recall, Drusilla's father was Herod Agrippa I. And the year is still right around 59 AD. The location is in Caesarea. And also they're going to talk about Jerusalem. The characters in our study today are going to include King Agrippa II, Antonius Felix, Bernice, Porcius Festus, and obviously our beloved Apostle Paul. Now, beginning our study, Acts 25 in the King James Version Bible, always, 
in verse 1 now when Festus was come into the province after three days he ascended from Caesarea to Jerusalem now notice that Festus is the new governor back in our last chapter it was Felix well why is he the new governor because the Jews asked the Roman government to remove Felix from power recalling again from our last study I explained how the Jews had the right to demand Felix's dethroning under the Roman law so Felix was continuously worried about being removed from power and he cunningly became friends with the Jews to keep his seat in the Roman government he knew full well that the Jews could remove him from his throne and part of keeping the peace of the Jews he leaves Paul in prison to keep them content but unfortunately for Felix the Roman government removes him from power regardless and they appoint a new governor over Judea whose name is Porcius Festus now in verse 2 then the high priest and the chief of the Jews informed him against Paul and besought him and desired favor against him that he would send for him to Jerusalem laying wait in the way to kill him but Festus answered that Paul should be kept at Caesarea and that he himself would depart shortly thither let them therefore said he which among you are able go down with me and accuse this man if there be any wickedness in him the first thing to consider here is that the Jews in Judea specifically the Sanhedrin council didn't trust the Romans that's because of all the bad things that Felix had done to them over the years. They had every reason to be cautious over trusting the Roman government. So here we see Festus, the new governor, wanting to please the Jews. So what does he do? Well, after only three days on the job, he travels to Jerusalem to meet with the Jewish leaders concerning the situation with Paul. And the Jews trying to convince Festus to bring Paul to Jerusalem see that they were planning to kill Paul while he was traveling from Caesarea to Jerusalem the same plan that the Jews had two years ago however Festus refuses that request from them to transport Paul back to Jerusalem instead Paul is kept in Caesarea until Festus returns for Paul's trial and one thing to note as well is Festus had no knowledge of the Jews uh, their plan to kill Paul while traveling the Jews kept this plan a secret to themselves even from Festus in verse 6 and when he had tarried among them more than 10 days he went down unto Caesarea and the next day sitting on the judgment seat commanded Paul to be brought and when he was come the Jews which came from Jerusalem stood round about and laid many grievous complaints against Paul which they could not prove while he answered for himself neither against the law of the Jews neither against the temple nor yet against Caesar have I offended anything at all but Festus willing to do the Jews a pleasure answered Paul and said "Wilt thou go up to Jerusalem and there be judged of these things before me well since the charges brought against Paul were all concerning the Jewish laws Festus recommends to Paul that he be tried by the Sanhedrin back in Jerusalem instead especially considering that Paul hadn't broken any Roman laws Paul was innocent in Festus's eyes and he wanted to wash his hands from this whole Paul ordeal in verse 10 then said Paul I stand at Caesar's judgment seat where I ought to be judged to the Jews have I done no wrong as thou very well knowest for if I be an offender or have committed anything worthy of death or I refuse not to die but if there be none of these things whereof these accuse me no man may deliver me unto them I appeal unto Caesar Paul doesn't want to go to Jerusalem because he knew full well that he would not receive a fair trial by the Sanhedrin also I'm sure Paul was very worried about being killed along the way at that point however to Paul's favor being a Roman citizen he had the law on his side in this situation the Roman law said that citizens had the right to appeal to the Emperor if the charges brought against them were very grave in nature once the Roman citizen filed an appeal they were taken to Rome to stand before the Emperor to have their fate determined so Festus grants Paul's appeal to the Emperor in verse 12 then Festus when he had conferred with the council answered hast thou appealed unto Caesar 
unto Caesar shalt thou go. And after certain days, King Agrippa and Bernice came unto Caesarea to salute Festus. And when they had been there many days, Festus declared Paul's cause unto the king, saying, There is a certain man left in bonds by Felix, about whom, when I was at Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews informed me, desiring to have judgment against him. To whom I answered, It is not the manner of the Jews to deliver any man to die, before that he which is accused have the accusers face to face, and have license to answer for himself concerning the crime laid against him. Here we're introduced to Bernice. She's Agrippa II's sister, also Drusilla's sister, daughters of Herod Agrippa I. You see, in 56 AD, Agrippa II becomes king. Agrippa was given the authority by the emperor to choose the high priest. And Agrippa knew a lot about the Jewish laws and traditions. So this is why Festus asked Agrippa for his advice. Considering the accusations made against Paul were all about the Jewish laws and traditions and so forth. In verse 17, Therefore, when they were come hither, without any delay on the morrow, I sat on the judgment seat and commanded the man to be brought forth. Against whom, when the accuser stood up, they brought none accusation of such things as I supposed, but had certain questions against him of their own superstition, and of one Jesus, which was dead, whom Paul affirmed to be alive. After Festus discusses Paul's situation with Agrippa, he's surprised to find out that the charges against Paul are more serious than what he thought originally. So Festus's attitude is, since Paul did nothing involving Roman laws, Festus really wants nothing to do with this situation. He's more concerned about his reputation at this point. He's a politician. In verse 20, And because I doubted of such manner of questions, I asked him whether he would go to Jerusalem and there be judged of these matters. But when Paul had appealed to be reserved unto the hearing of Augustus, I commanded him to be kept till I might send him to Caesar. Then Agrippa said unto Festus, I would also hear the man myself. Tomorrow, said he, thou shalt hear him. Festus, not knowing how to deal with these manners, suggests that Paul go to Jerusalem to be dealt with by the Sanhedrin. Paul doesn't agree with that. Instead, we know Paul's appeal to the Roman Emperor. Keeping in mind, Paul knew full well that he was on his way to Rome. Remember, Jesus told Paul, that he would give his testimony before all men at Rome. So now Festus, finally agreeing to send Paul to Rome, has to write a complete record of all these events. And he asks Agrippa for information regarding this whole ordeal so he can send a full report along with Paul to the emperor. Festus mentions in his report that Paul was saying that Jesus was alive. Speaking of the resurrection, and Agrippa wanted to hear Paul concerning this resurrection. And Festus arranged for Paul to speak before Agrippa the next day. Verse 23, And on the morrow, when Agrippa was come, and Bernice with great pomp, and was entered into the palace, uh, the place of hearing, with the chief captains and principal men of the city, at Festus's commandment, Paul was brought forth. And Festus said, King Agrippa and all men which are here present with us, ye see this man about whom all the multitude of the Jews have dealt with me, both at Jerusalem and also here, crying that he ought not to live any longer. But when I found that he had committed nothing worthy of death, and that he himself hath appealed to Augustus, I have determined to send him, of whom I have no certain thing to write unto my Lord, Wherefore, I have brought him forth before you, and specially before thee, O King Agrippa, that after examination had, I might have something to write. For, if, for it seemeth to me unreasonable to send a prisoner, and not withal to signify the crimes laid against him. So, in conclusion, Festus explains the situation, and now is compelled to send Paul to Rome, even without the so-called evidence needed to accompany him. Festus is more worried about his relationship with the Jews than he, he is with the matters concerning Paul. So he does everything to maintain his political standing with the Sanhedrin. 
So in this study, we saw how Paul's appeals uh, went straight to the emperor in Rome, and Festus is talking to King Agrippa, the son of King Agrippa II, and we also saw Festus introducing Paul to this King Agrippa to explain the resurrection of Jesus, and that leads us to our next study. Until then, peace, love, and grace of Christ Jesus be with all of you. Lord willing, I'll see you on the next study in Acts chapter 26. Ooh.